guys. We're here, City in the Hill. It's your guy, Gabs. Uh, I'm excited for today. Uh, man, today I get to to have a conversation with a friend, a mentor, uh, my boss, my actual boss, um, you know, someone who inspires me, and I'm excited for you guys to to hear his story and, and his upbringing, where he comes from, what he does. Um, yeah, man, I, I, I know you guys will be completely inspired today and you guys will be able to reach out. He talks to everyone. So you guys are good. You know, he helps everyone. So if you need help, reach out to him. But, uh, yeah. Welcome Danny, man. I appreciate you having you, man. I'm excited to be here, man. Yeah. This yeah. is really like cool. <laughs> yeah, man. Thanks to Marv over here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, man, let's jump right into it, man. Honestly, uh-huh. uh, uh, there's a lot I know about you, but I think in some of these uh, questions that I put together, I'm going to learn some more. But um, mm-hmm. let's start with uh, tell me a little, tell us, I guess, a little bit about yourself and yeah. you know where did you grow up, you know yeah. how you were raised, all of it, all of it, all of man, it. Man, I could be here all day. But thank you for having me, bro. I really appreciate that I'm here and speaking with you. I think you're a genius when it comes to creativity, and this podcast hopefully changes people's lives when they hear it. Um, and I'm um, having people here talk about life and talk about, you know, just wisdom. I think it's important that people, um, need a place to hear things that will inspire them. So yeah, my life, my story, um, grew up born in Brooklyn, grew up in Staten Island, went back to Brooklyn. That's how it is. But the reality is that I was uh, born in East Flatbush. My dad has, and my mom have a dry cleaning business. Um, they still have it, 47 years, still killing it, still doing their thing, and I'm just so blessed by that. Um, so, yeah, I grew up there, and then I moved to Staten Island. My dad bought a house in Staten Island, um, and we lived there with three with three other brothers, John, Stephen, and Timothy, awesome brothers. They're like my best friends, um, but it wasn't, it wasn't all that nice. Um, you listen, I had mom and dad in my life at a house, big property. But I was struggling internally. And I think how it started was when I was in first grade, I got left back. Okay. Yeah. First grade, got left back. ABCs, did not know. <laughs> they don't know how to read. It just got worse. And so when I got left back, a um, lot of insecurities, a lot of issues um, came to my mind and came to my life. And I was bullied, verbally abused by certain classmate uh, members. And I just went. It's like you know their names. Yeah. <laughs> like I know their names. But. You know, that was, you know, years, years ago. Um, but the reality was that I, I struggled in security. I struggled with, man, I'm a dumb dude. And for a long time. Um, and um, when, you know, when I graduated, I went to high school. Listen, my junior high school class was eight kids. When I went to high school, it was like 4,000 kids in one school in New York High School in Staten Island. And so, man, it was a shift uh, my my whole uh, mindset was different. The reality was this. I was struggling uh, as a young man and didn't know my identity, didn't know who I was. Um, and my like my father called me the black sheep of the family because I just got in trouble all the time, anger issues, fighting with my older brother like every single day. Right. You know, I couldn't stand them, couldn't stand my brother. I could, just had a lot of issues. And the reality that God came into my life, that's what it changed. That's where everything changed from there. It was a transformation. It was when I was 16 years old, God got a hold of me, and I was different. I started loving people that I hated. And it was my father first, my brother, started loving those guys and just yeah. and cherishing them. And so, yeah, that's my life, bro. And 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 I wouldn't change it for the world. Yeah, yeah. That's, nah, that's dope. Um, and I love John. So uh, He's a cool guy. He's a, he's a good dude. Um, you know, I know you mentioned a piece you mentioned, uh, you struggled with insecurities and you felt, uh, dumb, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, an aggressive word, right? But you felt dumb, but as long as I've known you, which is almost eight, 10 years at this point, right? Yeah. You've always had this mentality of like a hustler's mentality. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to see that in you yeah. uh, of being, uh inadequate or or dumb mm-hmm. with with the way you move and walk around i guess talk a little bit about that yeah so uh, yeah when i say dumb i'm not a good student in the sense of 
in class learning. Right. Um, not a good uh, writer. Uh, I'll be honest, not a good a lot of things. But what I do think I have is this like hustle mentality. Like like yeah. Like um, I gotta get the money. I gotta find the money. I gotta figure <laughs> out how to get the money. And and it's okay to think that way. Right, because I think that God created us to be creative. Right. I think hustling is just another word of creativity, and I became creative. And so my first ever hustle was in third grade when I started a bead business or a chain bead business, like like the Puerto Rican, like the Puerto Rican bead. So when Puerto Rico, <laughs> like, and when the Puerto Rican beads came out, I looked at it i took it out and i was like wait a minute i can make this it was before youtube right, before right, anything right. you saw online i actually took these beads out and i put it together and i said i can make these and so i went around my students and said, hey you want a puerto rican flag you're puerto rican you want and i started making these puerto rican bead uh necklaces and people started buying them for me and i said mom i need you to buy me beads and she's like why because i'm gonna make beads for jay she's like okay whatever you want then my mom would give me things because she wanted me to not beat up a kid or not yell or scream. Right, she right. took care of me in that, in that way. She would always give me the things I needed. Um, and she wanted me to, you know, to succeed. So I started selling beads and I literally hired people when I was in third grade, hired people, went around class and I literally sold beads. That's my first ever business. And I donated all the proceeds to our church, to our school's church building project. So Back you, in the day, so you didn't make no money for yourself. I didn't make any money for myself, but I just, you know, I, I just made, I just made, and you know, this type of business, and it was a little small thing, and I, and after that, I kept on being creative. Okay, um, selling cans in baseball parks where my brother played baseball. Um, I would, uh, um, you know, clean uh, my my friend's backyard, water plants, my and my friend. So I just did any job I find, I will just do. Right, and so that was in my like my DNA. It was to work as a young age and to find ways to make money. Yeah. Um, I remember wanting a bike, and I asked my dad, "Dad, I need to, I need fifty bucks to buy my my bike called Nitro." I, I love. I have a huge story on that, but he was like, "No, I'm not giving you fifty bucks." I was like, "Okay," and I had to go find that fifty dollars. Right. I had to go make money, and I made the money, and I got my own bike. So. That hustle mentality has always been in me. And also, I think I've seen it through my father working 18 hours a day, 16 hours a day, every yeah. single day. That man be grinding he's now. grinding. <laughs> he's 70 years old in the next yeah. month. He's grinding, still working those long hours. Yeah. Um, and so I think I've seen it through him and seen it through people that were in my church that, wait a minute, they don't have degrees. They don't, they're not like super, you know, rich, but they wake up every single day and they work for their families and they work and they love it. Right. So me being around that is so important. I would say that to the young you know, audience here is that you want to learn something, go to the forefathers and hang out with them right. and spend time with them, ask those questions. And so that was my, my thing throughout the year, throughout my years is just seeing and saying, wait a minute, I can do that. If they can do it, I can do it. Right. right. So it's just been like a great journey, man. And I love it. I know you spoke a little bit about like your mom in that process and yeah. being that like support system. Yeah. I guess talk a little bit about that because um, obviously with what you were doing, watering plants or whatever, you had this confidence to you, right? Yeah. Um, which obviously shifted. How did, how did your mom play a piece in that? Like how did she play a part in that? Like yeah. whatever you can do, I got you. You yeah. can do it all. Yeah. I think my I think my mom um is like my best friend. She would always support me, ask questions and, and always talk to me. How you doing, Danny? How's your day, Danny? And even with my anger issues and my bursts when I was a kid, my dad my mom would always like bring me down to a place of like, All right, what's wrong? You know, what's going on? Right. Um my dad would come at the end after work and talk to me. But my mom will always would always pick us up, feed us, take care of us. Right. But always she will always ask the question. And my mom in the household is the smartest person in the planet in the house. I every anything you asked my mom, she had the answer for. She was like <laughs> her favorite show was Jeopardy, and so she literally knew almost every single. I always say, "Mom, you should go to Jeopardy because you're so smart." Um, but she would always just help us and guide us and just support us. 
she was that great mom. And I think that that helped me um, be uh, grounded in, in, a, in a way because there was a mother that was just loving on me. Right. And if I needed, if I wanted something that I know that I, I liked, I enjoyed. What was the one time I, I liked it? Plants. I, I love plants. And I went to the store and I walked in the store on Fifth Avenue and Lincoln Place, in Park Slope. And there was a plant store. And there was, I have never seen these type of plants before in my life. And I was like 15 years old, 14 years old. And I was like, mom, I need you to buy me these plants. I want these plants. And she literally bought me like 10 plants. And I put it all over the house. And she's like, this is for you, Danny. And all my brothers are like, what's wrong with this kid? <laughs> this is, what's wrong? My little brother was like, Danny, yes, you're an idiot. Like, my little brother was like, what, what, what? I think Timothy, they're plants. They're, they're, they're not, they're, they, you never see these plants before. Like, you never see these plants before. Like, it was amazing plants. And my mom just bought it for me. Right. You know, mom, I want to go to Puerto Rico. All right, buy him a ticket, send them, send them away. Like, and, and maybe they wanted me out of the house. Maybe they wanted me to be quiet. Maybe they wanted me to be, be entertained. But it helped me. And they helped me through that. I think if that wasn't in the play in my life, I think I'll be just, you know, going into the streets and finding my own way. Yeah. But they helped. My mom, my mom was like a, a great. She's like my best friend. That's fire, man. That's fire. So so you're, you're saying all these things. And, and so you're saying all these things about like the different ways you started getting money right yeah, yeah yeah when did it become a uh when did it snap or when when was that that moment where you was like okay i don't just need one job anymore i possibly need multiple areas of revenue or income like when did that become an idea for you i remember talking to you one day and you were like yo you gotta have like three or four areas where something's coming in and i'm like three or four <laughs> i'm like i just got one job you know what i mean but you were yeah. throwing that idea in my head yeah. of like yo listen yeah. literally anything you can do yeah. you can make money off of yeah i yeah again i i'd say that god created us to be creative and i don't think god created us to just do one thing i think he, multiple streams is a is a it's out there a lot of people do it Right. right. I don't recommend it. Like I don't recommend everyone do it, but I think if one or one or two, I would say not three or four. Like I just like you know. But again, we live in New York City, right? It's very expensive, correct? Extremely. Extremely expensive. Now is expensive. Well, I live in Long Island, but yeah. <laughs> and well, the taxes here are crazy in Long Island. That's what I heard. <laughs> um, but I live in New York City. I have two children. My you know, my wife is a teacher. Even with her salary, we, we could not afford rent in Park Slope or Brooklyn. Right. You know, we wouldn't have to leave a little further deep in Brooklyn, you know, to but thank God for our in-laws that we live with them. But the reality is that I knew that, that New York City was expensive. And I said to myself, I need to have different revenues to survive. Right. Right. And I, again, I think I have HD, what is it called? ADD? Yeah, I think I or have HDAD, it. Or HDAD. Whatever, like that. I think those, I have it because I letters. cannot yeah. I cannot stand still. You can't. No. I can't. You know me. I cannot. You can't. You can't. I cannot. I, I have to look at something like, even in this podcast, I'm not even joking, even if we're in this room, in my mind, I'm like, can I do this in my home? <laughs> It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. It's like, can you I can. do this in my home? Can I? Yeah. I, I, look, I literally looked at his so the software and say. Can I buy that? How much does that cost? Boom, 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 boom. Can I? I have a network. I can tell people. To, and that's how I move. And it's weird. And I you try to make money with Marv already. <laughs> <laughs> and, but the thing is, that's that's how my mind works. Right. Everywhere I go, I say to myself, mm, is this possible? The reality is time is not your enemy, but time is is real. Right. And you you don't have enough time. Right. If I did not have children, I I I, I think my wife would have divorced me because I would be home at, at every day at nine o'clock because I would be doing something right. to find something to get something. Right. And uh, thank God for my wife to pull me together and, and, and say, Danny, you have me and, and blah, blah. And, you know, give me and scripture also helps me through that process. But, you know, when I was in college, I, um, Listen, I, I went to a Christian college, the King's College. What's up? Love you guys. Um, they're amazing college. 
Uh, but I again, I got in there because of my leadership skills, not my academics. They were like, right. Danny, you're you you don't make the bar, but we like how you lead in your church, so okay. we're gonna give you a chance. And I jumped into it, and and I saw the tuition, and I saw all this, and I saw all that. So I said, I have an idea to make money to survive in New York City, right. and to educate myself, and to push me through to get a college degree. That was one of my like, I gotta get a college degree. I want to be the first one in my family to have the college degree. And so how I did that was, um, I actually did a dry cleaning mobile service. With your parents? With my parents. Okay. I say, Dad, listen, if I take the students' clothes and I give it to you cleaning and I'll travel back in the city through the trains and give it to my students, I just you do the work, I deliver, and you charge me, and that's it. So I did that for two and a half years, bro. Jesus. In the train with clothes. Then I did a thing called a subscription. And this is crazy. If anyone does this, thank me. I, before subscription became subscription, I did subscription with dry cleaning. It was $450 a month, unlimited dry cleaning to all my professors and, and students. And I had like 15 people give me that monthly for nine months. And I did their dry cleaning. And you now, paid for school. And I went to school. That's crazy. And so I did that for, for, for two years. It was painful. I mean, taking all those clothes in the train before I drove in the train, it was painful, but it paid the bills. I ate at night. I pay my tuition. Right. And I said, man, this is good money. My dad enjoyed it. And, you know, I went from there and I said, man, I got to keep on doing this. And so I got a full-time job at, 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 at my church, but I said, I'm still doing dry cleaning. I I'm, I'm th- I did this job. I'm still doing dry cleaning. I knew the business. I know how to work the business. Yeah. You're still doing dry cleaning I'm, now. Still, you know, and so that's just been in that that going forward. I think from there was like I got to find ways and right. And I and I have to you know I have to slow down. I got to slow down. But <laughs> listen. But I I, I thank God. Life that, is a balance. Yeah, life is a balance, and I think that I thank God for giving me those those ideas right. of creating and being creative and having people around me to be like, yo, you're crazy, but you, you, you do what you have to do to feed your family. <laughs> yeah. I remember one time we were, uh, we were working hard one day. We had like mad meetings and, and we were talking to so many different people. Uh, and it was exhausting. And I remember going home and I was tired and I was like, man, but I gave you a call about something and you were literally delivering t-shirts <laughs> And I was like, fam, go home. <laughs> like today was a, a rough day. Yeah. And you were like, nah, I gotta, I gotta, I, I gotta t shirt. Yeah. I gotta get this out real quick. Yep. And, you know. But not only all right, so not only you were delivering t shirts to to make money, yeah, but there is a there is like a compassionate generosity to you. Yeah. Where you're like, No, I said I was gonna give it to them by this time. I'm going to make sure they have it, even if I got to go deliver it myself. Yeah. And like that opened my mind up to not only create the multiple incomes, yeah. um, but be honorable in that. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like be uh, moral, respectful, you know, that that not only the God give it talent to create, but to love. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I guess speak on that a little bit. Like where does all this gener- I I'll, I'll be honest. Sometimes I'd be like, yo, you love too much. <laughs> <laughs> like you should not be loving all these people. Yeah, like, yeah, you it's, know, yeah, it's the God that I serve, man. He, he loved me unconditionally and he wants me to love my neighbors. He wants me to love my neighbors. And uh, people ask me like yourself, why you, why you love people so much? And I, I think, um, again, Christ loved me so much, loved us so much. He died for us. And I have to give that back. Right. The Bible says, love God, with all your heart, mind, and soul. And love your neighbor as yourself. I am appreciated what God's done for me. And I found out my new identity in Christ. I found out who I was in Christ. I found what Christ has done for me. And I was like, you know what? I want to serve people. Yeah. And love on people. And especially my enemies. You know, we hear preachers say, the enemy and the enemy. And, 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 and the reality is, they're not talking about Satan. They're talking about your your people that don't like you. Like, Forget about them, you know, blah, 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 blah. I've never heard a preacher say, hey, love your enemy. Give to your enemy. Serve your enemy. 
Right. The scripture says all that. Right. And so I, there are people that did not like me or people that, that were jealous of me. And I have pastors, you know, disagreeing with me. And, and I just, I just say, you know, I just want love on you and support them a hundred percent. And so. And you do it. And I just, you know, I'll do it. Like, Yo, leave that man alone. <laughs> <laughs> It, you know, people would tell me like, "Dan, he doesn't like you. Right. Dan, he doesn't want to be in your life." And I would just say, "You know what? I know he doesn't, but right. I, I just want to tell know him that I am genuine, like love him or love right. that individual right. or love that group." And I don't have any. And I and I, if I have an issue with somebody, I want to fix it. Right. If I have an issue with somebody, I want to fix it. And if anyone out there has an issue with me and you want to fix it, let's fix it. Because I, I I think it's 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 important to um forgive is important to um show them christ through that forgiveness right um i don't forgive you because i'm you know the man i'm forgiving you because christ forgave me i need to forgive you and if i hurt you in, in any way please forgive me and how can i serve you right um, i think killing people with kindness i really believe to change someone's heart is to kill them with kindness is to show them different and so they be like why do you like me so much danny and they and I believe the spirit of God will convict that individual. I believe that God would help and convict and say, man, treat this person better. If that person is treating me this way, he's definitely treating other people that way. Right. Right. So I think treat that individual better. I think God will do something. If we're just going to be bitter and like, you know what? You don't like me too bad. You know, forget you. I'm going to do yeah, my own yeah. thing. I'm just doing, I'm going to just do me. I got God on my side. And God's like, that's not me. That's not love. I gave right. my li- I gave my son for them. Right. You need to love on them. Now, I'm not going to, and it's it's difference between you know caring for them and loving them. But there's some areas that you know stay away from them. Right. And then you know, stay away. It's that's good for you, but also good for them. Just stay away. But if I have a bitter or hate them or do not dislike them, I think it's not it's ungodly. And in my business or in my what I do for a living. Um, I just want to serve and show them. Like I'll deliver a person's t-shirts you would. for an hour, two hours to them, and they're like, well, "You don't have to do that." Well, I'm a, I'm customer service number one, but I really care about you, man. I really want right. to serve you, and I think that that person would tell other people, "Hey, you gotta check out Danny's stuff." Right. I got one guy who was an amazing artist, dope artist, basketball artist. I mean, he was amazing. Like he's incredible from um, Westchester, and. Uh, I did a t-shirt for him. I did it literally for three three days. Got his shirts done. Easy job. Got his shirts done. I'm like, yo, bro, you're dope, bro. I'll deliver it to you. I delivered. He came and met me and because he was in, in the city. He's like, man, I got so many people need to hear what you got. And I got like three jobs from him. Nice. Because of customer service, because of the kindness, because of like, listen, it said take time away from me, but I long term. Long, you know, listen, any business people, it's not the short term gain, it's a long term gain, right? You want to survive, think about long term, not think about short term. And so, I think that helps me throughout my years. And I think, I thank God that I'm successful that way. That's dope. That's dope. So, I remember one time, uh, we were talking, and and I told you the reasons why I don't like living in a house, uh, which is a whole different conversation, right? But I remember one time you were so proud. To buy your first house The first house? This is my second house That you're living in Oh, first house that I'm living in Okay, yeah, yeah. Sorry Because I know you got You're, you're into the Now the, the real estate the Real game. estate deal, yeah But I remember you, you, There was like a And you can correct me if I'm wrong But there was like a Like a nice Humble flex Where you were like Man Like I bought my house on t-shirts You know what I mean? <laughs> like Yo yeah, and I guess talk on that because I don't know if it's necessarily a reality, but I guess talk yeah. on on that feeling of like, yo, I was able to do this not only for myself, my wife, and my kids. Yeah, you know. Yeah, um, yeah, having a home was just a super blessing, and like you said, I bought my house for a t shirt. So let's go back to the story. Yeah, I opened a t shirt business, um, screen printing business about ten years ago. Through a ministry I started, I, you know, we talk about this, but God belongs to my city that I started 12 years ago with a bunch of awesome young people that I had, my good friends of mine. And um, we did a prayer walk. At the end of the day, I again walked in my friend's business and I said, How do you make these t shirts? Right. And I looked around, sat there for days, hours, weeks, months, and I said, I could do this. 
I could make t-shirts. That's and I was infatuated with t-shirts. I just think the concept of it. I always wanted a t-shirt from our youth group. I was just like, advertise. You know the t-shirt has 3,000 impressions? If you wear a t-shirt that has a logo on it, 3,000 impressions a day. A day. Walk around the neighborhood. 3,000 people would see your t-shirt. So I was just infatuated. I studied it. And I just asked questions. I said, Joel, a good friend of mine, Joel, he owned the t-shirt company, JT Printing, what's going on? Um, I, I, said, money. No, I, said, <laughs> I said to him, how do you make these? And he just like literally took me under his wing and said, this is what you do. Every single step. His son was a printer. I said, man, just, I would literally stare and like, okay, that's how you do it. Okay, that's how you do it. And I said, and I gave him all my money. Like I literally gave him, like I literally... I would say thousands of dollars. He he's printed Goblin City T-shirts. We sold thousands of these across the country. He printed them, and I was always again. I'm, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm all about profit, right? I'm all about like the bottom line. Like and I said, wait a minute. If I'm giving him this much, I'm making this much. But if I make it in my own, I can get this much. Right. And during that time, all the shirts that was selling, and to this day. Every shirt that's sold goes back into ministry. Go back into. I don't get a salary from Goblin City. I don't get anything from there. I give my money back into youth ministry. So I would. I would like sponsor retreats. I would sponsor all these things and give. I mean, my money away. All the money away. I just wanted more money for the kingdom. Right, right. That was my right. thinking. More money for the kingdom. Let me open a business. More money for the kingdom. So I opened my business. You supported the basketball tournaments that way too. Supported right? basketball tournaments. Supported youth group. Youth groups. Church uh, uh, tickets for. For concerts just gave my money away right. um and i said you know what i want to open my own business i have a network of churches it's all connections like just capitalize on that and right. so i literally said i'm gonna buy it so i bought the equipment bought the equipment put it in my friend's shop and i started learning printing and guess what i failed horribly <laughs> like and that's the word like i burnt destroyed so many customer shirts it's unreal I've lost thousands of dollars. I've literally slept to five o'clock, uh, went to bed at five o'clock in the morning making t-shirts. Literally not seen my wife for, for probably six months straight. Took young people with me when they're 13 to like three o'clock in the morning. Hey, catch, catch a shirt or print a shirt with me. And it was hell on earth. All right. But it was fun, worth it. And man, I said, let's go. And I just kept on going. So back into to go to the question was, I said, I'm making t-shirts. I built my own t-shirt company called Brooklyn First um, Screen Printing. It was named after my daughter. I, I named my daughter Brooklyn. She's first daughter. So um, first child. And so I did that. I went with a, with a partner with mine. We did the shirts. We All that good stuff. And got some more clients. Got some more clients. Got some more clients. Got some big clients. And I just saved. I just saved. Saved my money. Save, 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 save my money. And... I took my brother Jonathan was in real estate and he's like, Danny, you know, you want to buy a house with me? I said, I got some money saved. Nice. I said, all right, let's do it. And we bought a house in Albany, two family house in Albany. And I put a good down payment down and we made it and we bought that house. And I said, I could do it again. And so through the pandemic, the people were making masks. And I've made mask, and I made screen printer mask, and screen printer t-shirt, and I saved. Wait, mask? I can make mask. <laughs> I can make mask. And, I can do this. And then, and then, and all these t-shirts just came in, and I just said, "Let me save more money. Let me save more money. Let me save more money." And and also my job. Let me save more money. And I just saved and saved and saved and saved. And I said, "Wait a minute." Then I learned about buying a house, you know, through my brother, and said, "Wait a minute." Right. First time home buyer, three percent down. Interest rates are so low, 2.7, something like that. I said, I did the math and said, John, can I do this? And and the house I was going to buy, I was like, I could buy it for this much. And I was like, let's go. Let's do it. And I said, babe, we're going to buy a house. We're going to move in. Like, and we're going to nope. do it. And she was like, I don't think so. We're not going to move. I'm like, I'm going to buy this house. And it's a pit under my name. And we're going to make it happen. Right. And I just did it, man. I just threw it in there. And guess what? I live in Staten Island. Yeah. And I'm so grateful for all those years of struggle, all those years of ups and downs that I did not give up on my failures. Right. 
And I think that people need to hear that. Like, if you fail, it's okay. Especially something you like and you enjoy and you fail it and you mess up and you, you know how many customers like cursed at me <laughs> and like said, Danny, you're the worst printer. A lot of them said that. Uh, and, and I've made thousands of mistakes and I never gave up. Right. Thousands of mistakes. Even the customer will come back to me and say, uh, even though I curse at you, I need you to make more t-shirts. I could have said, nah, man, you dissed me. No, I'm going to, I'll do it for you. No problem. I've lost thousands of dollars. I went to business deals. You know what I'm talking about. Business deals with people and, and yeah, failed and, and, and lost money. Yeah. And, and got it depressed and yeah. got anxiety and got frustrated, cried for days. Yeah, I'm going to need you to go see that too. <laughs> <laughs> I need someone to go there and take them out. But but the reality is, it's the worst feeling. Right. But at the end of the day, again, when you're faithful That's good. to your family, faithful to your wife, but also faithful to God's plan and mission, he takes care of your business. And I live in a house now that's big. It's My huge. kids can run around and play. I have a I have grass. I have a garage. <laughs> I have I have a drive. I could park my car in my driveway. No more looking for parking right. or no more pump tickets in the pumps anymore in Brooklyn. Um, but all of that is the glorifying God. All of that is all God. And but I just stay, stay the ground. And I also want to say that, you know, suffering. It's part of your discipleship. Pain, suffering is part of discipleship. Because when you suffer in your weakness, you are strong in the Lord. When you give it to the Lord, man, God just does some crazy stuff. He just does it. And I see it through my job. I see it through my my wife and I and our family. When we go through things and we give it to God, man, he takes care of it. Yeah. That's dope, man. You're dropping gems today, buddy. Nah, that's good, man. Um... I kind of want to shift though from the uh, uh, the business and the hustler, even though it's it's intertwined, right? Uh, earlier we spoke about like balance, right? Mm-hmm. I remember when I first met you, um, I think I hit you up on like Facebook. Uh, I didn't know I didn't know you at all, and I, I wrote you this whole big thing uh, about something I was going through at the time, and I was like, "Yo, I need to talk to this guy," just because I I have I heard about how much you literally just walked with people and helped people and kind of just supported people. And I'm like, look, let, let's see if this guy is exactly what he says. And literally you were like, your, your response was like, meet me at pizza town. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, where's pizza town? You know, he was like across the street from my church. I said, where's your church? <laughs> 98 <Avenue. laughs> And then, um, and I went and I met bro and you sat with me. And you just listen to a young Gabs just talk nonsense for hours. Yeah, I remember that day, And man. you sat and you just listened. And then you were like, well, listen, this is what we're going to do. Show up to my church on Sunday and just sit with me. And I was like, that does nothing for me. <laughs> that does nothing for me. Yeah. And it was like this then on, like, relationship building that we did where we tackled each thing one by one. Mm -hmm. Like, literally, you married me and my wife. You dedicated my son. Like, possibly dedicating my next Uh one. You know, um, I've learned a lot. I think uh, this transition now, where where I would love to get some gems from you, is, I guess, talk about, let's talk about, I think the biggest thing I've learned from you um, is how to honor my wife and love on my kids. So let's talk a bit about fatherhood first Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, your idea of it, what it means to Mm -hmm. you. um, You know, does it come from your parents? Me is a little different. Yeah. I didn't have my dad growing up. So it's like I'm learning a bunch of things. But, you know, Mm -hmm. how does how is it? How's your journey for fatherhood? Man. um, Thank you, bro. How much I owe you to give you that? (laughs) Um, Thousands and thousands of dollars. dollars. You're hustling. Um. Yeah, man. Fatherhood is the greatest experience uh, I am still in. Um, raising my two daughters. Um, I did. I wanted, I wanted boys, but God gave me two girls. I wanted girls. Um, and uh, yeah, two boys. They literally, they take my heart and just, they just, just they just change everything. It's just different. Um, fatherhood is the, is the best 
um, gift that God has given man. I think that's, um, it's just a glimpse. I say this, it's a glimpse of God's love for us. Um, it's God loves us unconditionally, un, you know, unreal. Like we can't even imagine, but f- being a father just show me how much God loves me as his son. And as I love my daughters, I it's this love can never be pulled away, can never be separated. It, it can, ne- my daughter can walk away. I'm still a father. It, it, the, 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 the name father cannot be taken away from me. Hmm. It's in me. And so it is a, it is a ex- experience that um, I recommend every father to do. Every person, every man to do. Um, Let's it's, go get kids. Go get kids uh, <laughs> the right way. The right way. Um, and um, again, I think that my experience as father has definitely come from my dad. Okay. Um, my dad was born in Puerto Rico. Didn't have a father in his life. His father was an alcoholic to the core. Cheated on his my dad's mother three times. Had multiple children. Um, my dad literally saved my, his father's life when he said a story that his mother found out he cheated on him and he, his mother was going to stab him, like kill him while he was sleeping. And then while he was going to, when she was going to him, my dad jumps on him and like, daddy, papa, whatever, you know, and she pulls back. And she walked away and she told him that story. Like, I wanted to kill your dad, but you came and saved me. Jesus and so my dad, born in Puerto Rico, you know, having no real, real good father figure in Puerto I mean, father at all, yeah. comes here with his mom, his sisters and his brother and literally lives on welfare and lives all everywhere in Park Slope. And he even told me he lived in the Bronx, um, didn't have that father in his life. Um, he wanted to come, his father wanted to come and be like back to in his life, but he had a stroke and he never talked to his father, like real one-on-one with him for like you know, 20 years until he passed. But my dad walked into a church and he found father figures and he got saved the same church that we go today. He got radically saved, and he says there are people in his life, fathers in his life, that led him to be a good father. Mm-hmm. And my dad is an amazing dad. Now, he worked 16 hours a day. Like, we hardly saw him. Yeah, His days off were Sunday and Monday. But what my father showed us was the love that he had for God and the church. And he loved us. Yes, he beat us. We deserved it. Jesus. Yes, he <laughs> stopped us around. Yes, he did all that stuff. Yes, 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 yes. But he was, he just showed, again, it's God. He just showed the love of God to us. Right. And he took care of us and he worked for us. We, he owned a business. He started a business when he was 23 years old. And the way he learned dry cleaning was the way he I learned T-shirts. He walked into dry cleaners and he just sat there and the guy said, you want to learn? And he was like, yeah. And that's how it started. And he literally struggled all his life to put food on our table. And he just showed me that type of principle. And I think that just rubbed off me. And I said, I have to have the same exact attitude. Love my wife. Bro. When I say my dad, my dad was not a perfect father, but I'm telling you right now, bro, when it's a when you see your dad holding your mom's hand all the time, that's an impre- that's just like sticks with you. I look back, I'm like, what did my dad do with my mom? Like, let's just think about it. My dad and my mom always were affectionate. Always love he would say some crazy stuff like your dad, relax dad. <laughs> um he was always affectionate with my mom. He worked with my mom and he took care of my mom. If I yelled at my mom, this dude would have choked, choked me. Like he would be like, yo, you better respect your mother. Like he was that kind of guy. Um, he took us on vacation. He took, he took care of us. 
but he showed a love of God and love for my mom. It was amazing. And they love each other like crazy now. And they're like 46 years married together. They attached to the they're, hip. they're attached to the hip. Yeah. Right. And my mom would say, he's crazy. My mom would say, I can't believe it, but they love each other to this day, the old hands. Like, I, 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 like, they're so affectionate, like, yeah. really love each other. And, um, and so I think that just showed me, and I'm like, I gotta do this. But again, Angel, I want to say this to you. Gab, I'm sorry. Angel or Gab, I'm sure. Whatever. I, I would just <laughs> say this. It all comes down, man. It all, And I try not to be too spiritual here, but I'm telling you right now, Scripture is clear, man. God has the ingredients of a great marriage. Scripture has it. It's, it says it in, in Ephesians. It says, honor your wife. You know, it says... Um, to um, sacrifice your sacrifice to your wife as as Christ sacrificed, as the Christ loved the church. Love your wife. Take care of them. Serve them. You know, don't be this macho man. Just be the man that God has called you to be. Right. And man, and it wasn't a good journey. I'm telling you right now, talk. My wife hears this. My wife will know that I'm crazy. My wife will know that I'm. I still got a lot of work to do. But man, right. I love my wife, bro. I would kill for my wife, bro. My wife comes first before my children. If someone just said, choose your daughters or your wife, I'd be like my wife, there's no way. Yeah. There's no way. This is my, this is my life. My, my kids can go on and marry, you know, their, their men, but I'm going to still have my wife. Yeah. And so um, I have to be a good husband. And I think if you're a good husband, you're going to be a good father. If you're a good husband, you're going to be a good father. You're going to serve your children well. You're going to honor your children. You're going to love them and grow them. And, I think for me as a father, I need to um, not just be that, have a, a name father, but be a father in their lives. And how do I do that? Time, 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 time with my children. My brother John uh, is a great example. My brother John is crazy. He's, he's awesome. He's a cop. He's amazing. But he told me, he's like, Danny, even daddy was working so much. I don't want to work like dad, but I want to spend time with my children. Right. And Jonathan would literally take trips and hikes and all that stuff and spend time with his children. He still does. He still does. And I'm like, that's awesome. And he told me how to, he told me how to do like, just spend time with your children. So when I'm at home, I just play with them, spend like quality time with them. Look at their interests. What are you doing? And all that good stuff, you know, don't be their best friend, right. be their father. And so, um, be their best friend when they leave your home, but be in their lives constantly. I also would say being a father is amazing. I love to see my children laugh. I want to see my kids laugh. I want them to laugh like crazy. I want them to see me laugh at their jokes. And I want them to know that I care for them and serve them. Um, and it's just exciting to see their growth and their maturity and their love for God. Another thing I would say as a father is I love feeding them the word i love feeding the word the, the best thing a father can do with their children is not take them to sport camps or not take them to sports and have that that's all good do all that but the best thing a father would do to their their children is to feed them the word of god is to feed their soul if you're not feeding their soul man yeah you're not feeding them is they're feeding their soul so i pray with my daughter we read the scripture together she reads the word by herself I want to feed her. I want to be a part of the local church. I want to be a part of what we're doing. I say to my family, I say, guys, as daddy's a pastor or daddy does ministry, we're doing it together. Yeah. Together we're doing this. If we're going to go on a, to travel the world and, be, and go on a mission trip, I'm not, I'm not just going to go. We're going to go together. We're doing this together. My daughter's like, no, I don't want to go anywhere else. <laughs> I'm like, this is a family mission. Right. And so when a scripture says, Families first. It's when a father or leader literally takes ministry over and says, "You're you're just second place." He's like, "No, no, no, no. Ministry is first. And I think that he's saying that ministry is first, but also together, we got to do this mission together, right. not just by yourself. And so my wife's in it. I'm in it. My children's in it. We want. You definitely have your kids doing pantry with you. That's it, bro. You got to get them to see, and that's how. You become a good father. Right. I can give my daughter 
She loves gymnastics. I mean, she loves gymnastics. I would spend thousands of dollars on gymnastics for her. And I want her to do, learn and I want her to do that. But if I'm only spending a quarter of that for my kid's soul, I'm failing. I want to spend more money to invest in her to so, to so she can love God. I want her to experience things that she'd be like, man, that's God. Yeah, That's God. I want more of that, Daddy. I want them to have a person. She said she wants to get baptized. I'm like, you want to? And I'm like, you know what that means? <laughs> that means you had to confess your sins, repent. And she's like, yeah. And I think it's because we're feeding my children the word of God and right. the Holy Spirit is convicting her and helping them through it. And so I think being a father is exciting, bro. Yeah. It's a journey, it is ups and downs, but I wouldn't trade it for the world, bro. That's dope. That's dope, man. Um, I know uh, I've had you here for a while. Uh, if you were able to give advice to uh, younger you, mm. what would that be? Anything, anything. If it's if it's like advice to a younger you, or you know, if you want to flip it and give advice to. A lot of the people who watch this, whether it's people who, yeah. you know, serve at a church or people who don't, like, what would that, what what are some gems that you would kind of just push out there? Mm. You know, you ask that question. People ask that question all the time. What would you do? I'm like, a lot of the things I've done has changed me. Right. Right. I wouldn't change that because it changed me for the good. My failures changed me who I am today. Right. So that question is really um broad but i i would say that i would want probably for a younger me and for a younger generation i'd say be accountable you you need accountability right you you need somebody in your life that would that would hold you to your word that would that would feed you and guide you i I, I'm, i'm a big advocate of mentoring i think every adult needs to be a mentor Everyone needs to be a mentor. Everyone needs to be a light to something, to someone. I think we're called to do that as a Christian is to go and say, or, or, or anyone, I mean, to literally be like, how can I invest in the young generation? Yeah. Bro, the OGs in the parks are the best pastors in the world. Because the majority, probably 95% of the young people in the parks, on, in the streets, will look up to that OG. Yeah, because what that OG offers them, I man. I've seen things. I'm like, man. I mean, you guys are good. You just need Jesus in you. And you're good to go. <laughs> I mean, I've 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 heard OGs yeah. come to me and say, "This is my block," and it's their block, and they're legit, right? They they really invest in the young people. And I say, I think that, I think that you need somebody in your life. I needed people in my life that mentored me. There were many people in my life that mentored me, but I would probably. To answer that question and deeper is that I would probably be more vulnerable and I would probably be I have accountability. Mm. Um, literally not being afraid of going to somebody and say, Bro, I did this. I need your help. Yo, know, I, I I I need you to or I, I need your prayers or I need I need this from you. I don't I don't think I did that enough. I don't think that me and my wife had enough accountability. Mm. With people yeah, yeah. Uh, I told my wife when we were dating I said let's go counseling She's like counseling What's that I'm not crazy yeah. Yeah. And that was the mentality as a young Latino in a Pentecostal church You don't go to counseling bro That's like demonic if you go to counseling Like you need Jesus if you go to counseling <laughs> And I think that And I think that's truth come on And I think that it's um, If if I had more of counseling In a sense of like going deep with my issues Yeah in college is when I figured out my issues. Yeah. I wish I was younger than that. Now, I thank God that there are people in my life that said, Danny, you're going, there's something wrong with you. No, nah, I'm good. I'm good. No, no, no. In college, it was a guy named Dave Leedy was like, no, there's something wrong. Let's talk about this. Now, nah, yeah. I'm good, bro. What's up? Yo, get off. I would like be all, get, like, yo, chill, relax. You know, yeah, don't, yeah. don't answer that question, bro. I'm good. I'm good. And they're like, nah. You have you have issues. Nah, I don't have issues, bro. And I would just like <laughs> break down in front of them, but like, yo, stop. And I and he yeah. would be like, No, let's go keep on. And I would just talk about my first grade experience, my left me and left back, my more deeper, deeper, deeper secrets that came to my life. 
and I just did, definitely shared, and that gave me a just like, oh, I'm free. I'm free right. from all this, this bitterness and this this baggage. Yeah. Because someone said to me, "There's nothing. There's more to you." So I wish I did that at a younger age, um, and I wish I went to um, more people to say, "I need you to be accountable. I need you to ask the tough questions." Yeah. And I waited. I waited to college to do that. Yeah, man. I appreciate you, man. No problem, bro. I appreciate you for coming out, man. Yeah. I. I Listen, me and you have journeyed together yeah. for a very long time. Um, even with my, I think my new, I, the way I, I, the way I say it is my new discovery with mental health. You know, for yeah. the past two years, it's been like really identifying it. You know, taking care of my triggers and mm-hmm. and even you know the conversations we've had where we've fought back and forth, and you're really just trying to figure me out. Like the times you've taken to really like, all right, what is this thing? And then. And I knew I knew it worked because every time we would meet up afterwards, you'd be like, you know, I read something about mental health. Where, uh, <laughs> and I was like, all right, so you're reading, you get, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, you're you're, yeah. you're really trying to figure it out and just yeah. love on people and try to figure out yeah, how to yeah. take care of people, man. I appreciate you. No, well, Good I appreciate time. you, Angel. I thank you yeah, uh, yeah. for you know doing this. And again, you're you're being creative. You're hustling. Yeah, I, I am your boss. You are my uh, boss. And I and. I always tell you, I've been telling you and Philip, like, get your hustle going somewhere else. Like, yeah, find yeah. something that you're good at and you're and you're doing it. And I would say to be successful in what you're doing here is being consistent and just kill the game, man. And yeah. your heart for God is overwhelming. Your heart for your wife is overwhelming. Your heart for your children is overwhelming. And I hope that is contagious to the next generation that you invest in. And, and I hope that we can just change someone's heart that would change a generation. I think you're doing this and I hope everyone that comes on this podcast will will recognize that you're doing this not for yourself, but you're doing this for um, the next person that's thinking about taking their life. The next person that wants to be a business person, the next person that wants to have a career, you're going to spark something. And I hope that, you can do that Appreciate constantly, you. bro. Appreciate you. Appreciate you, bro. Pleasure Thank you. Man. No problem, bro. Love you guys. Bye.